Hi, everyone. Manuela Marcajani from Isomer Skincare. Welcome to the podcast. Today, we're going to talk about aging gracefully for those of us who are 60 plus. So uh, welcome to the podcast as a cosmetic chemist, as a product developer with over 35 years experience. Yes, I'm in my 60s and people are asking me, um, what's your secret? What do you know? What do you feel? How does this work? How does that work? So let's talk about this journey. Let's dive a little bit deeper into what's going on in our 60s. What are our options? What to look forward to? Is it ever too late? All of that good stuff. Okay, so my personal experience, how my skin and body feel, essential ingredients to look for, and actually, let's talk a little bit about tips on diet and lifestyle. Let's dive in. So let's start first. We're going to talk about my experience. I started out very young with very problematic skin, a lot of autoimmune issues and deficiencies, right? And through this adolescence and young teen years, and then in early, early adulthood, I always had this nagging or lacking in the sense of how my skin looked and felt, right? How my body looked and felt. And there was things that I could control and things that I couldn't control. So I've learned over these last, you know, six decades is that aging is a natural process. Aging is, is like this, right? Sometimes things work really well. Sometimes they fall apart. Then they come back together and fall apart. So it is a continuous process. It's not like something you should be giving up on because we're always going through different changes. I've learned especially, I, I guess I was never really worried about the number. So maybe that's also part of my mindset. I was never really worried about the number. I was always more concerned about the condition, the health of something, as opposed to the number or age of it. So I've always embraced being healthier, stronger, better, always trying to improve. I always imagine one of my goals, one of my perspectives, one of my visualization is that I'm taller and leaner and stronger and more flexible and more capable and more resilient. So I think this kind of outlook has allowed me to embrace aging and not really think about the number. That's why I talk about my age, talk about the fact that I just turned 61, talk about the fact that I had struggles, because I do believe these are all little stepping stones. No, no road or no path is ever just clear and straight and problem free. There's potholes, there's rocks. Sometimes, you know, the weather changes, things happen. We have to actually build up a resilience. And when you, you know, I think that this is all part of the aging process. It's all part of growing up. It's always a bit of a struggle. So that's been my, my experience. And I, I do believe that a lot of what I did when I was younger, a lot of the deliberate things I did diet-wise, trying to really focus on a very healthy diet, I was obsessed about food obsessed. I'm not a nutritionist, but I probably have more research and study and understanding of food than most nutritionists do because I was totally obsessed with calories and fat and and what to eat and what not to eat and how to control the body with what you're putting into it. I was obsessed with exercising. I exercised a lot. I was on the volleyball team when I was younger, two city champions, championships. Um, and I tried to do gymnastics for a long time too. I was always trying very hard to have you know, this is, this is who we are. This is the tool of who we are. But I do believe that this early lifestyle choices that I was making made a very strong foundation. So do I think it's ever too late? So for a lot of people out there thinking, well, I never really exercise, never really watched my diet. Well, the good news is it's never too late to start because your body's responding. The, the news is if you've been doing it like I have, and then you kind of fall off the wagon, if you will, that's okay because you can get back on the wagon and recover. Your body remembers. It's like they always talk about it doesn't know age, but it has memory. Muscle has memory. Your body has memory. And it actually wants to survive and thrives, which means what? Maybe you abuse it once in a while, but when you start treating it properly or giving it what it needs, it responds very quickly and it starts to adapt and grow. That's why when you start maybe a program where you're, you can't jog or run, but you just start walking a little bit and then you find that you can walk a little bit further or a little bit faster, then all of a sudden you can skip, then all of a sudden you can jog a little bit. Everything is progressive and the body really adapts wonderfully. So that's been my experience. And I do believe that nothing is lost. 
Nothing is lost. Nothing is lost of the good things that we did in our 20s and 30s or even bad things. But those fundamental things, I think, allow us to recover. I found five or six years ago when I had a, I don't know if you want to call it a stroke, I had a, a mini episode where I had wrist drop and I lost the movement and sensation in my right arm and I had to wear a cast for over six months. Because of that, I didn't exercise. I was afraid to exercise. Even to this day, I still hesitate. I almost feel overwhelmed if I have to do something with a lot of energy because I think, oh my goodness, I am going to lose mobility of one of my limbs. And I, I, I really didn't know. I mean, it was literally to wash my hair. I had to use one hand over another, swing it over and, and scrub them together. I mean, it, you really start to appreciate how important everything is. So I became very cautious and very aware and chicken in a lot of ways of, of moving things around. But now where I do feel like I'm in the clear, my body is responding very quickly to even little things that I'm doing. And I do believe that this is the life experience, that what you do matters and your body will use those good things that you've done as a framework and as a stepping stone. how my skin feels in my 60s. My skin has always been sensitive. My skin has always been reactive. And though my skin may look great, and I know a lot of people say your skin looks really good. You don't look like you're aging. You know, you look better. You know, you look like you're in your 40s. I've heard all these comments and I love them. <laughs> Please keep those comments coming. Um, I love them because I do work hard on on fixing my skin, but my skin has always been a constant struggle. It always wants to break out. The pores want to be as large as possible. The skin wants to be very reactive and sensitive. So I can't say that my skin got more sensitive, but here's what happens as you age. So when you're younger, you've got skin that's very reactive because of the hormones and the oils and all of this is happening with the bacteria. You're getting a lot of breakout. Then you're doing things that either you're over processing your skin with a lot of things to fix, or your skin is naturally more sensitive. Then when you get a little bit older in your thirties and forties, your skin becomes very dry. Um, the collagen quality changes. It gets older. It gets more brittle. Your skin has less resilience. It slows down a little bit, becomes more sluggish. After your 40s and 50s, when you start going into menopause and hormonal changes, your skin is now all of these things. Like everything is always stacking up, right? It's not just you have this one problem, it goes away, then you have a new problem. No, it's one building on top of another. So when you start changing the collagen quality, that thing go coincides with the antioxidant goes down, the glutathione goes down, it coincides with the oil production, go, it coincides with your metabolism slowing down. So all of these things stack one on top of another. So by the time you're 60, if you leave your skin alone and if you're not following a skincare protocol, you've stacked all those years of things that have been happening to your skin. So you find that your skin is getting thinner. It's going to get even thinner. It's going to get even more sensitive. It's going to get even more reactive. My skin also included. I keep my skin under control because of my skincare routine, something that really allows me to, and, and sometimes I have to make it very basic because things that I've used on my skin, the vitamin Cs, the retinoids, uh, the growth factors, the exosomes, the azelaic acid. I love these ingredients and I would recommend these ingredients. These are ingredients you should be looking for in your skincare routine, especially when you have combination of problematic skin, regardless of age. But I find that in my 60s, I find that in this age, I can't use it as often as I like to or need to sometimes because my skin is much more sensitive. So you'll find that the skin becomes more sensitive. I find that my skin is a little bit drier in certain areas. Find that my skin is a little bit more stubborn. I find that wrinkles is not an issue for me. I don't really wrinkle. I don't, I, I don't, I, I mean, I see expression lines definitely when I'm smiling, when I'm squinting, when I'm doing this, but really to see the fine lines, I don't see those. But what I do notice is loss of elasticity. And that to me is a volume issue. That to me is a fat issue. So I find that some of us are predisposed to holding more fat. Some of us are not. And I believe that I'm, I'm not predisposed to holding a lot of fat. I don't think I have a lot of body fat. I think that 
I have it in certain areas where I don't want it, but in areas where I do want it. So I think that that has been an element for my skin, the sensitivity and the loss of volume. So I know that I have to target hydration, refattening that skin lipid, and really balancing my microbiome, making sure that my microbiome is actually fortified and my microbiome is well balanced. So my skin is not as reactive and my skin stays within this really great zone. So I can keep that acne at bay. I could keep the breakouts at bay. I could really have less flare up and sensitivity because I do get them. And, and it's random. It's not, it's not necessarily, especially, you know, in the sixties, it's not (laughs) necessarily, you can actually tell I've done that and this is going to happen. It just happens. Not quite sure why. So I do find that I respond more or react more to environmental issues, like different, different perfumes or different settings that other people have that I'm exposed to. I find that my skin, um, how my body feels in my sixties. Okay. So my body, uh, used to feel really bad. So after I had the wrist drop, I found that my body was very sore. I had a lot of inflammation. So you'll find that you react a lot differently to the food that you eat and the movements that you make. There are parts of my body that sometimes when I get up off a chair or my hips or my legs or my knees, that they they never used to bother me and they bother bother me all the time. I found that walking every day, I found that doing small, different, small things has really helped with how my body feels. Right now, I feel very strong. I'm like literally pain-free. Inflammation uh, has really come down. A lot of it has to do with the diet that I'm following as well. So there are things that you can do and there's small little tweaks. I think just watching your sugar, watching, you know, the bread and pasta, just by cutting those out, I noticed that a lot of the pain goes away and also doing something really simple. What I found has really helped me a lot in my 60s. Yes, I walk. I'm a big walker, right? So I walk 10 to 15,000 steps a day. Winter, summer, it doesn't matter. Some days I go to 28,000 steps. I take the dog out for a couple hours every single day, as much as I can. And I think it's really important. Walking is one of the best things that you can do. I also, I used to run, I don't run anymore. I used to do uh, weights, gentle weights. I got myself a total gym. I've used it a handful of times. So right now it's sitting there and it's literally good for laundry because I'm really not using it. And I do really need to get back to it because I do believe you need to be working out more. But what I've been doing, because I do travel a lot, I've been taking this with me. Took it to Paris. I take it to Minnesota. And I find that this is something that's very inexpensive, the TheraBands, and you can start doing movements with them for your arms. A lot of people ask about arm routine. This is one of them that I do. One that I found really beneficial is I wrap this around my knees right? I wrap it around my knees and I try to, you know, push against them and do these kind of movements. And I found that this has helped me with my pain in my hips and my flexibility and mobility. And I think this is really important. And I think that sharing this, like this is not an expensive thing to do. This is something that everybody can do. If you are chair bound, if you found that, you know, you, you're carrying a lot more weight, or you're not very flexible, you're not very motivated, you keep this next to you when you're watching TV or when you're doing something and just pull on it a few times this way. You don't have to be precise in how you're doing it. But I find that in your 60s, these little micro movements are really important for you. I find that it makes your body feel stronger. You feel much more lubricated in the joints. You find that a lot of pain goes away. So all of this, I'm a big believer in this. I'm a big believer in that we want to go out the last, you know, quarter or third or 10th, it doesn't matter. You should go out in the best shape possible with the less amount of pain as possible. And you're in control of this. So this is something that I've really seen now in my 60s. I understand this more than ever. And I also can see how small little changes, if it doesn't serve you, don't do it, right? We, we poison ourselves all the time. And I think that as you get older, you can't really afford to be doing that. You need to be doing small little movements that really help. Ingredients to look for in your 60s in skincare. Ingredients to look for in your 60s in skincare. Okay, so this is what I think. I think about my skincare routine and I think about 
my cleansing phase. So in my cleansing phase, the ingredients that I want in my cleansing phase are going to be a nice gentle cleanser. I like it to have a little bit of exfoliating properties, a little bit of AHA and BHA, and I mean low dose, just so that every day it's almost kind of like a refreshing exfoliation so that it can keep things moving nicely. A little bit of that uh, microbiome polish, if you will, for the skin. Nothing too heavy or scrub wise, nothing to overprocess your skin. Then you want to go into something that feeds your microbiome. So give it either a, um, the hypochlorous acid, which is really good if you are reactive. If your skin is very sensitive or reactive, you might want a hypochlorous acid or a copper peptide. Those are ingredients to look for. I then look for, and this is daytime. I'm going to talk about daytime, then talk about nighttime. I then look for something that's going to hydrate the skin. Hydration is important. Antioxidants are important. So for the hydration, you have hyaluronic acid, you have some glycerin, you have some vitamin E. Those things are important ingredients to be looking for. Then you're going to have um, your antioxidant. A lot of people reach for vitamin C. I found that over 50 plus, I reach for the glutathione more than vitamin C for my skincare. I find that it has helped keep my skin tighter and brighter, clearer, in better condition. I do bounce back a little bit between the vitamin C and the hot and the glutathione. Um, but I find that when I start predominantly with the vitamin C and not use the glutathione, my skin with the vitamin C breaks out much more. So it prefers the glutathione. So for me, 60 plus is all about the glutathione. And of course, we have peptides, collagen peptides, exosomes, vesicles that are filled with nutrients, regenerative elements, growth factors. Those are very important in daytime and nighttime skincare routine. Sunscreen is important. I like a mineral-based sunscreen. I think that, again, for calming and soothing the skin, uh, the ingredients you want to look for is going to be your medicated zinc oxide or zinc oxide. Very, very good for skin. 60s. In the evening, everything that we just talked about, all of those, you know, the peptides, the collagen peptides, the matrixyl peptide, the glutathione, the growth factor, um, the exosome, these are all incredible ingredients to help with the regeneration of your skin. You also want to add a retinoid. So this is going to be a retinoid that you're using a couple of times a week to help with this collagen production. One of the things we want to do is we want to feed our skin in a way that it is going to be a collagen maker. It's going to continue to make collagen at a very nice clip, a very good rate, because it will slow down in your 60s. You need to refatten your skin a little bit more in your 60s as well. So you want to be able to create an environment that the skin factory is fed properly. And these are the ingredients that help with that skin factory, right? So um, the other thing that I like to do is every once in a while, you go in for like a really deep kind of hydration on your skin. So once, maybe twice a week, you just I just douse my, my skin either in um, a Vaseline, if it's the winter time and it's very, very dry, or the medicated zinc oxide. And I really let my skin baste in that. And I find that that has added a lot of strength to the skincare routine. It's, it's calmed it down as well. So that's really my two cents. Okay, this, this one is like a no brainer. Everybody should know this and this is stay hydrated. So drink plenty of water. Coming from a person who really hates water, I don't know why. Water bothers me. It makes Keon laugh when I tell him that I said, why? He goes, Mom, why didn't you drink? I go, I don't know. It bothers me. I don't know why. It's almost like when I drink water, it's like, but I know it's good for me, so I do it. And here's the funny part. There are studies that show that if you do things that you hate doing, you actually get more benefits from it. So maybe me hating water is giving me more <laughs> benefits than just drinking water itself. Apparently it gives you more resilience or more determination. So when you're constantly doing like if that dreaded walk or that dreaded exercise, if you hate doing it, but you still show up and do it, apparently in your brain, it opens up other channels that make for more success and more positivity in your life. It's a very interesting kind of correlation. So even though I do dislike it, I know what the benefits are. And I know that I shouldn't, um, <clears throat> I know I shouldn't um, 
skip it. So that's important to stay hydrated. Drink good quality water, the best quality that you can. Um, really look at the source of water is important because a lot of times bottled water is not necessarily better than uh, tap water because a lot of times it's just tap water and they're just marketing it as, as something. So look for the quality of water, know where the sources are from. I have a few favorite sources. We can cite them down below if you want. Use sunscreen. Oh, sorry. Before I get into the use of sunscreen, also with your water, these things that are like the smart waters or the flavored waters, I wouldn't, if I were you, because I think that they actually don't hydrate you. I think they dehydrate you. Anything that has a little bit of sugar or fake sugar in there, it plays with your body differently. And I don't think it lands properly. I, uh, for even for everything I've said about water, I would take plain water over flavored water every single day because it is much better just to have that plain water. I find that very cold water, I can drink way better than room temperature water. So that's a, that, that's a little hint for, for those of us. Um, moisturize your skin right every day. Use gentle cleansers twice a day. So either if you're know, taking your shower, like cleanse your skin twice a day. Get regular checkups for your skin, for your body, right? So go see a dermatologist. Make sure that they're looking at any of those bumps or marks that you have on your skin. Sometimes it's a beauty mark and then sometimes it becomes something else. So always get those things checked. There's places you can't see that other people are going to have to look and examine to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. And it is important to do that. Don't leave things, you know, have a regular routine. I think that's one of the most important things I learned about um, the 60s uh, is, is the routine and why it's important. Now, that was about the skin and tips for skin aging, right? I, I also find it what's really good is to wear the right clothing, right? Wear, wear hats, wear, wear glasses, wear hats, wear sunglasses, wear hats, protect yourself. You start burning your skin or you start abusing your skin when you're a little bit older, it does not recover. I have a scar um, that I've been working on for the last year on my ankle. And usually this would heal very, very quickly for me. There would be no marks. What happened was this woman was walking her dog. She had a kind of retractable leash, but it was like a thin rod and it wrapped around my ankles and cut. I, I mean, if I had been a younger child or a smaller person, probably would have just chopped my foot right off. It was really bad. Although we did everything correctly, you know, put on all the medication and then all of the skin boosting elements, I still have a very fine, like it's, it's just taking, instead of be, being disappeared in six months or four months, it's almost uh, 11 months now. So I noticed that things take a little bit longer. So it's important to wear protective clothing because we, we don't have the same metabolism, even when we're doing all the right things. Now, Diet and uh, lifestyle. Balanced diet. Rich in vegetables, fruit, fatty acids. I follow a Mediterranean diet. I always have. Sometimes I, you know, eat processed foods. And I find that once, you know, they always say, but you can't have just one. And that really happens to me. Not that I, you know, I go for chips or things like that. But French fries once in a while, mm -hmm, I like them, right? Ice cream, my weakness. I love ice cream could be any flavor, but coffee flavor, especially, but those are treats. And those are things you have to think about. They're more like a retinoid, or they're more like a treatment that you get done once in a while. This is not something that you should be indulging in every single day. So my diet tends to be focused on protein. And I find that you need to do this. You should be doing this all the time, but especially as you get older, you should be focusing on protein. You should be focusing on sugars coming from your fruits and vegetables. You should steer clear of refined uh, foods, you, uh, processed foods, for example, breads, pastas. I like to go for whole foods in the sense of non-refined, very simple, eat fresh and local, very important too, because you want to get nutrients out of your foods. You have to think about the foods as medicine. You have to, I find, your gut health changes everything. It's going to change whether you have a headache or not, whether you feel tired or sluggish or not, whether your body is functioning the way it should, where you, where you, you have more inflammation and body aches. It's directly related to your uh, gut. 
So aging gracefully has a lot to do with diet and lifestyle. So what do I do? So I have, um, you know, grilled, grilled meat and fish. I'm not really a fish person. Um, so I'm very picky about when I do have, have fish, but grilled meat and fish salads. And I've never bought salad dressing in my entire life. I've only ever done olive oil and vinegar and a little bit of pink salt. And that's it. Sometimes some lemon juice. That is what my salad dressing is like. And I do equal parts. So I have a spoon and it's, um, it's like a serving spoon. So it's almost like maybe it's about two tablespoons. So I do one full of that of organic olive oil and then one full of that of a red wine vinegar, a little bit of um, salt. And that is how I season my salads. Really, really simple. And I think this is important too. A lot of times you can even forego the vinegar and just go with the olive oil and lemon juice and salt. And that's good. Don't introduce these high fat, high sugar elements into your body, especially as you're getting older. You need to be very specific about the quality and quantity of what you're eating. We don't move the same way. We don't feel the same way, but we can feel a lot stronger and healthier just by those tips, right? Reducing the amount of alcohol. Alcohol, again, is sugar, right? So you want to take that sugar down. If you want to have a glass of wine here and there, Think about a better quality wine, one glass, a couple of times a week, like a retinoid. Like, yeah, I'm always thinking about how people use retinoids. You know, you're going to use them two to three times a week. A lot of things in life that can be a little bit more aggressive on us. This is how, this is how my perspective of in my 60s, how I'm doing it and how, how I find that it helps me age a little bit more gracefully. I, I like the fact that I can still move and, and be flexible and be resilient and, carry groceries and do what I need to do um, and participate. It's all about being able to participate. I participate with my children. I participate with the, the family. I'm able to do a lot more things. I'm able to have more stamina uh, at the office as well. You know, long days, a lot of things that we're, we're doing content, we're doing research, we're doing presentations, we're, we're interacting with a lot of people. I want to be able to have a clear brain. You know, I don't want to have, I don't want to be foggy. That also means that what? In my lifestyle as well, I'm resting. I'm going, I go to bed early. I get up early. I've always done that. That's always been my habit. I've always had an eternal clock that I, I basically sun, sunrise, sunset. I'm that person. I find that if I defy that in any way, I just don't perform the same way the next day. I find that I'm very sluggish. So listen to your body. I think it's really important because it will have a lot of mechanisms, especially as you get older. It's telling you what it needs and you should give it what it needs. I find that those are important things for aging gracefully as well. Have good friends. That you need because you need to be social. You need to have like-minded people around you that nourish you, have a, have a laugh with people. I find laughing is really hard, uh, really, really hard when you miss it. It's, uh, it. Laughing is essential, you know, being with people who make you laugh, being with people who... You have, you, you, it takes away your stress is also important in your 60s because you can age gracefully and you can age strong and centered and focused with the same amount of drive and energy as somebody in their 20s or teens or 30s. Seriously, you really can. I, I feel that I perform at that level, um, but I find that it is because of the fundamental things that I've been doing diet, lifestyle wise, you know, the rest the exercise, watching what you're eating, making sure that it's good quality. It should be quality over quantity all the time with food. It really is. You're not, when the kids were little and when I was a lot younger, I was more like a garburator, eating everybody's leftovers, nothing could be, you know, throw it out. I was very, you know, just trying to, because when, especially when you're very tired, you just eat a lot of carbs, a lot of things. And I realized that that was not serving me properly. It was not making me feel great. I wasn't showing up the same way. So it's a, you know, these are, these are all the things that I've learned that really do matter and make a difference uh, when you are aging in your sixties. So there are many changes that happen in the decades. Your skin will change. Your body will change. It is not as resilient as it used to be, or sometimes it shows up in a way that you didn't expect it to. But I think you've got to embrace these. Embracing it, knowing that 
you can do a lot of things to enhance and take care of yourself from the inside out. There are a lot of things. And I hope that we can share more of these things. If you find this topic interesting, and if you want to know more of my tips and tricks, and if you want to know more about what specific kinds of food or exercises that I am doing, I'm happy to share them. I'm happy to share my experiences with you on, on the aging gracefully. We do talk about the skin. We do talk about the skin health. I guess the other, the, the other thing is, you know, do, do things for yourself that nourish you. That's really important. And I mean, nourish you emotionally and spiritually, right? So have a few girlfriends that you cherish. Go and get your hair done once in a while. Like I've started just something simple, just getting uh, a blowout, you know, once a week just before doing doing some of these presentations. I never used to do that before. And I find that that is a small thing, but it's a big thing. It's, it's actually making me feel like more energized. I feel I feel more loved because I'm taking time for myself. We always expect other people to be treating us in a certain way, other people to be doing stuff for us, to fuel us, to fulfill us. But I think a lot of that comes from us. And I think as we get older, we get wiser and we have to own it. So own it, own it. And let's enjoy this journey together. So thanks so much for tuning in for Aging Gracefully 60 plus version. I look forward to your questions and comments. And always, your comments are very engaging. It really is interesting to see what you have to say and what you share. And if you'd like me to talk about different things, please feel free to mention them below. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you next time.